Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to learn how Neon Esports approaches the team fights because they are one of the best team from Southeast Asian region and consistently improving their strategies and the ideas, which I noticed very cool. So I'm here to share it with you. So at the end of the video, I guarantee that your perspective about the team fights or how you will set up the team fight will completely change once you see their techniques and ideas. So it's really worth watching. And they are really good at setting up the team fight, you know, like allowing the enemy to feel comfortable to take a team fight, but they don't always let the enemy to get into them with different doors. They close all the doors except one. So if the enemy really wants to take a team fight, they have to come to come through that one door so that way they are always prepared for whatever will happen following that so this is the speciality about neon east world so we are going to study that today a quick analyze about what's happening on the map so like he has 11 zooms and looks like he's at the top lane sewing the top at the meantime slot is playing important and looks like Mirana has used the ulti the, they, are, they just don't want to fight because like the opponents are like really good at team fight since they have these like super ultimates tp ulti weaver is like very hard for the radiant to catch the weaver and there's a swap out for the safety omni repel and the time is there to burst the target it will be it will be very hard for void spirit to go in and come out Again, it's this DP silence, EO silence combo, swap combo into the silence. So it will be very hard for him to play a peaceful game. So as they are getting closer to this 15 minutes uh, boundary room timing, they don't really look like they want to go to the go at the enemy, looking for the enemy together as five. Instead, they have decided to split up, fracture a little bit. As they have these illusions which gives them provides them good vision like they have a different approach to this 15 minute mark gameplay but like here they don't even have uh, more than two heroes to defend this triangle which is very important for this medusa but there are really good sentry wards like placed by the supporter Jaunu and Natsumi is just farming the item as he got the manta he doesn't really want to run at the enemy very early on they are just working on the items and he know he has a really good like level advantage over the enemy carry who's we were only level 9 and medusa is level 13 already so like they have the level advantage slightly a bit of gold advantage so they don't want to throw that and he had a very good laning since the laning since he ever left the lane he is like been farming like very nicely so you don't want to find an end point to your own farm by running at the enemy like this early on because you don't even have a dagger yet on the slider this hood is like really important to stay alive throughout the team fight team fight is not only about the jumping on the enemy like when you are creating a shield you have to cover your core you have to stay in front if you are not strong enough to stay in front you wouldn't be able to accomplish anything as a core so like slider understands like this hood of defense is like really important again it is tiny as well who could like deal a ton of damage like at level 8 with a stun toss combo he will probably die so the magic resistance is no more on this brazier so the hood is like hood of defense is very important on this slider before he gets a dagger so like very good reading from slider as well and one more thing that I would say that voice is going for the Agonist build straight away. He doesn't go for he didn't go for the Yule build. So that way, like I feel very I mean like it's quite scary for voice spread and the team Radiant I would say because like since he doesn't have this Yule, if we ever get caught to this silence, probably he will die. And there's no way the team could like remove the silence. No serving heroes something like swap out or oracle ulti so that's very hard so but but still he's like he understand his real hero really well all you have to do is like you should not stay in front you have to angle to clear these back lines 
so that is the ability like when you don't have this escaping escapability tool like item tool you just need to be, need to outsmart your opponent because like enemy don't have a dagger yet they don't have a catching hero without a dagger they they, they are strong as five but they also don't have a catch hero the tiny is like very far away from getting his dagger so that way he's safe because like nobody is there to catch him that easily and maybe swap is the only option and even if the enemy swaps you can simply use the second skill and, and run away and then ulti use the ulti which has two charges so like you will be fine so in this scenario when it comes to team fights they are actually not looking for a team fight but they see the opponent coming and immediately you see the preparation so he plays the sentry right there and observe on the hill and Mirana has came to top immediately and you see they are not fighting yet and the slider is not even hesitating to TP any sooner he is just sowing the lane taking the bounty at the meantime the fight is happening but like if you see that very uh, it, 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 it likes it they were planned for this movement like they know how exactly this would go and they are positioning the way they place the sentry and uh, using this map, uh, map advantage like landscape in their favor is like really nice so this Medusa is the frontliner and they don't get to see these backline supporters and also they don't know where the voice rate is they all they knew is like voice rate was at the top or somewhere else as he was showing the lane but like the, he is not even in the underneath their vault so like they don't see the voice rate until he came to this place right so until he came into the enemy enemy didn't know where the void fist was so like literally these supporters are out of position this omni is out of position and the tiny is out of position which is really good for void street so once again from radiance perspective and so they put the medusa right in front of the other two supporters as the enemy approach the high ground they place the sentry and observer and they don't go outside this is the place they are hugging because where the wall is the ward is there and the sentry is there there's another sentry but this is this is what the game what is going to win the game for you the team fight for you so he is running back also also like baiting the enemy into the sword area the stride line this stride line so it will be easier for the et to combo right so like now they yield and swept combo coming out from dire and then they managed to silence a bit later but he managed to use the stone gaze right before he uses the silence so Natsumi managed to use the Medusa stone gaze right before he got silence so which is really good they swept I mean yield first and swept as he was like yield a cyclone you can swap the target but he couldn't use the silence also it's because he has the manta and like why did he use the manta straight away is because as you can see yield swept manta is used so he used the manta straight away and used the stone gate because he's literally in the middle of five opponents so he used the stone gaze before he got silent so now the people uh, they don't really want to look at this medusa even the dp is running away now they feel like very bad about this so now the mirana comes out the et use this ultra right on top of this medusa because they just want to make sure the medusa doesn't die and whatever the kills they could go with it is the advantage that's the extra thing so you can see like where he is using this ulti and the stun he is like using where the medusa is standing he's not looking for the kill slice right away he's making sure this is the fighting point because this is where the medusa got swept this is where the opponent has to run back to like if they want to hurt this medusa they have to run 
back to Medusa once the stone gaze goes down. So he uses the ulti and the stun on top of the Medusa, right? Next to Medusa. So they would not be able to get closer to this Medusa. So even though like they didn't have all the hero at the starting of the fight, they simply outplayed the enemy by like slowly ragging into this sword area and then suddenly like even if the Medusa got swept, they had the solution. They had the mantra, stone gaze, and the ET stun and the ulti was there to make sure the enemy cannot get closer to this Medusa at all. Alright, now they are preparing for the fight and also for the Rosan. And there's a DD, so the Medusa gets the DD, Slada has a legend now, and like the, he's uh, queuing Skadi. And they, now they're going for Rosan. Now you see, as they prepare for the Rosan, he immediately places the walls like somewhere close to the enemy outpost. That way, like, they will be able to see both the entrances. If the enemy, uh, enemy cross that area, they will know that. And they're doing the Rosan, and even though the voice speed is like dead for any of the 6 seconds, it will take him for like any of the 10 seconds to come back near the team. But like they don't fear that, like they know the enemies are far away. Also at the meantime, look where the Mirana is standing. Since he has his observer ward, like he is standing there, because if the enemy comes there with a the smoke, like he will be able to see that. So like he can simply blink away, I mean leap away as he sees the smoke breaks even in the high ground since he has the observer ward. At the meantime, you can see the Elder Titan where he is like positioning himself after he plays the sentry, he is always playing on the danger spot. Why? Because if the enemy, in case if the enemy wants to go in to stop, the, stop this Rosan from happening, he is distracting. You have to cross this guy. So like literally if you are just going to walk in as an Omni or if you are going to run into this Rosan bit as a Weaver, you have to face this Elder Titan first. So as, as he is standing there, you wouldn't be able to get into the Rosan pit without breaking your smoke or without getting caught in the Avicen, right? Because he is the moving vote for the team, right? That's one thing. And if you like begin the fight with these dagger initiations, like let's say you have a dagger on this tiny or like some other hero like Strong Street or something. So whoever jumps in, like heroes that can easily jump in and jump out, so even if you manage to go inside the Rosan pit, since he is like sitting outside, he will be able to use his skills properly. And anyway, if this play is called like like he's sacrificing himself to secure the Rosan for the team, which is very nice. Right, team fight is not only about like how you use the skills or where you set up the team fights or something, it is also being prepared for the team fights all the time as you are doing certain things as you are pressing the objectives as you are farming around the map whatever you do you have to be prepared for these unexpected moves from the opponent to which they will like which will cost you a lot so you have to be prepared like talking about the team fights the preparation the expectation like being prepared for everything because like enemies are always looking to like come and attack you unexpectedly so you cannot say like hey they surprised me i didn't know they would come that way so there, there's no option so like from this moment you can see like how they stand there even though the mirana is not there the slada just connects to them now, now you can see like how they position themselves as they don't see the many heroes they only see this tiny at the mid lane they don't see any other anyone else and earlier they saw the winch using the second seal now see the dp at the mid lane right so after this movement the enemy could smoke i don't know if they smoke or not but like they could smoke and go to the top tower if they really want to fight because they don't see anyone else yet and this Viva could TP to the tier 2 tower simply if the other foes are smoking, right? So just for the safety, to make sure that the opponent don't really come and kill you unexpectedly. You can see like how he prepares using the remnant to right there to scout just to have some little vision. Also this catches the tiny, I mean like Viva very nicely. And look where the voice speed is standing. And look where the slider is positioning himself and where the ET is standing. So this ET is scouting this fog area like to make sure there's no opponent like hiding there because like they could TP there and surprise you. And as we talked about it, that's probably the top lane right now. And the slider, even though he has a dagger, he doesn't jump in 
because all they need is the tower so like why is it there and right clicking the tower because he has his dragon scale item so it burns the tower as well so he is there to just right click the tower every time the dragon scale effect goes down so like once he's like uh, that's the job he does right there at the meantime look where the voice print is standing and why is voice printing standing there it's because like voice print is the only hero who can simply escape he has the second skill and he is very tanky and he has the side si again him so he will be able to silent the opponent with a third skill so he is completely fine so they put this uh, voice print on the high ground why that's a high ground lower ground advantage so if the enemy uses the high ground advantage they will be able to outplay you but he is playing here so if the enemy is smoked in if the enemy wants to like come in like you have to cross this void spread right here so they have to cross this void spread so like if that happened in case in any case if the opponent used to come from this way his elder titan and slara will be able to jump to back up this void spread or to stop the enemy from getting close to this medusa in the first place so like anyhow, the enemy won't get to jump on the Medusa straight away. That is my point. So here at the top side, Elder Titan is counting. Slaughter is standing next right beside him. So that way, this way also like very harder for the opponent to approach. If they want to come that from that way, also the ET is there to back up the Medusa. And Medusa has the edges too, right? So like it's, this is very good for positioning from ET. Also, the enemy don't really get to jump on the ET. If they want to kill the ET, they have to come all the way from there. And the opponent really needs to kill these backline supporters, which are Mirana and ET first, if they are planning to win the team fight. Because they are the one who is like buffing the Medusa uh, indirectly using this Astro Spritz and all. And like these supporters are like doing a lot, like not getting caught in the team fight. So like it's very it becomes very hard for the diet to deal with this medusa because of their good positioning. And wherever they go, wherever they farm, they're always like creating a shield and not breaking their own seal. So because of that, they are they look like very scary to the opponent. So they they wouldn't be able to take a team fight against this neon that easily. Alright. So like we always talked about the high ground advantage team fights and all. So like now we will see how you take a team fight in a lane or how you kite the enemy into your favor and as you don't have any landscape advantage. So like they put this voice bit at the bottom lane which is like very dangerous but voice bit is the only person who can solve this lane and get out without getting caught. And he knows the top lane nobody is playing. If the Weaver was there, he would like love to farm this, and the Death Prophet would love to clear this all this wave. And nobody is farming these two waves, so they they know the enemies are coming to bottom lane. Even the tiny tried to catch him, but like, it didn't work out. So now they're trying to kill him. As you can see, that this like, silence like, really counters their voice rate. But because of that, one TP they ran away. And at the meantime, they don't see any of these heroes. Slaughter, E.T., Mirana, all three of them are outside the map vision. So if you choose the dire vision, they don't see anyone. So like they really fear. As the moment they see the Medusa TP, they know the entire team is somewhere closer to here. Why? The Medusa would, wouldn't TP into a team fight where the supporters are not even around him. Uh, so they don't really want to take a team fight because the Medusa TP. So like they are running away and like this is the very good approach from Radiant. The mid lane is sold, top lane is sold and there's a siege cave. So like this tower will eventually get pressed slowly. At the meantime, the Medusa is pushing the bottom lane and the other three were like smoked and like they are heading to like right in front of the Medusa. Because this is where the Medusa is, they are hijacking. They are making sure the enemy doesn't get to go. So here, what the Slaughter is doing is Slaughter saw them going and he blinked in right there and you can see he, since he dis doesn't have the dagger, it's very dangerous to walk into that area because you don't know where the opponents are and Medusa is like kind of far away from getting closer. It will take like 5 to 7, 8 seconds for her to get there. But like if you can see, this is already dangerous for the Slaughter but he's still walking in because that's the way you can allow the enemy to jump on you but like everything looked bad but the moment this tiny blinked in now it is even why 
the slider is not forced to go to the high ground or like he is not forced to walk into the outside he is taking the fight right uh, in, right there but the meantime the weaver has to come back the Wenji has to come back the omni has to stay the, the prophet was forced to walk into this area to win a fight against this slider right so like to kill this slider so like because of that because of that now the team doesn't have to chase them anymore why because this tiny choose to jump on this slider and it looked like they can simply kill the slider but like he's too is very tangy with his hood of defense even though he didn't click the hood earlier for the stun toss he's still pretty tangy and now because of that this medusa had enough time to walk all the way from there to here now boom even though like if you kill uh, like it's all about like how he set up the fight it's all about he forced the enemy to take a fight now they are really happy to take a team fight and now the medusa comes in with his stone case and cleans everybody so this voice spread is like always waiting for the opponent to split up he doesn't jump in as the enemies are sticking together you look at the enemy they are strong they stick very close to each other so if you go in like, it will be harder for you and you got the silence on top of that so you wait for the time movement but now you analyze their positioning this venge is on the one side viva is like quite away and death prophet on completely on the different side and omni and the tiny both are unable to help this range right now why tiny doesn't have the dagging anymore for a while and even though they don't have the slider in this team fight anymore because he's dying but he's being a great bait so like he chose to jump on the range because he's the one who's like out of position so like first he goes on this range and cleans him and now he analyzes the situations all right now this is your short time to go in and like his silence like really hurt the weaver and everyone as you can see how it allowed him to stay alive uh, he killed this omni like that and he doesn't get to use the chakuji because of the silence and he's eating a lot of damage from the medusa because of that silence as well from the void spread and now you see like how the death prophet is like winning the team fights on the other side since the voice speed has jumped into the, the back line et lost his positioning so like now since he lost the positioning like this death prophet is like with the haste running at his et and it's very hard for the et to take a team fight but if you can see this et is also doing a good job he knows he's dead but like look where he's running he's like running all the way away from this medusa and the other team for the time being so this voice speed and the medusa like don't mirana are healthy they don't really eat the damage as he is chasing because it's a very time limited skill right so if before you go down he also forced the death prophet to use a silence on him otherwise the death prophet will get stunned so for so like he now he doesn't have the silence so everything seems good so they took a fight which is not in their favor but they forced a team fight as they have the ages because this opponent don't really want to take a team fight so, since they know that medusa has the ages everything they want to do is they want to try to kill the voice spread and the moment they see the medusa is getting involved into that they don't want to fight they are disengaging all the time why they're not looking for a team fight they're looking for a pick off and like to take the tower so like it doesn't happen easily so like slaughter has to do that on purpose to make the enemy to take a team fight now if, like you have the ages you don't want to uh, your enemy don't want to take a fight but you want to take a team fight because you have the medusa with the ages and scotty is up so like you really need to take a flame fight you want to oppress the objective now you can take these towers like very peacefully because of that fight which happened like right there and now they get the tier one tower like that and like even though after buying back look how scary they are why they have the medusa ulti i mean ages and the death prophet doesn't have the ulti that is more than enough to explain like how strong they are right now and the aura, uh, omni doesn't have the ulti as well so because of that now they are freely allowed to take this tower without a problem even though they, these two guys don't really have the buybacks they are maximizing the ages immortality, immortality to like take this tower very simply they made it look like it's super simple but it is very hard to do that now one more thing that we can learn as he is like here look how they play they smoked right behind this medusa 
and got into their triangle as they see this the weaver is nowhere closer to them so he sees if there anybody comes here to solve the lean and the uh, best thing is tiny already stunned tossed and blinked back as he cleared this wave and tracked the wave away from the tower so now the medusa has to tank but like now they are smoked and they see the tinies here and he doesn't have the dagger so like slaughter stun voice spread arrow on the range step out didn't work and the fight begins once again even though they fight right in front of their tier 3 tower as they are still working on the tier 2 tower but like the fight got begun now we will see how they step the position the fight has just begun they clean this tiny and they clean this range and immediately the medusa walks in without hitting the tower he knows like he needs to be there he was staying there so the move will be succeed the moment they catch this hero he she just walks in and destroys everyone it's life and now you see like how they possess themselves themselves in this team fight and he's always using this vessel and this omni because he's using this heal and the grace to help his cause right he's using this grace whoever is in danger like especially on the when he is low he so he uses it otherwise he uses it on the death prophet and heals for someone who gets lower but they also knew that the guardian angel was on cooldown that was the reason they even came to this tower and now like by doing this they're separating their supporters away from their cause so he's literally nothing for now he's like he can't do anything no repel no heal ulti is on cooldown so he doesn't want to die so he runs away from the dangerous area so like by doing that like he is like completely separated away from the others and the medusa continues the chase kill the range force the tiny buyback and now once again the fight begins so like they are baiting the enemy into this medusa like here they kill the range like they see these two supporters on the left side they know the others are inside the base and the viva is like they don't know where the all right viva is here so this against on this range is like really annoying you will still have these spells available even after you die and because of that this ladder goes down very nicely done and how did they manage to kill this ladder to kill this ladder, Tiny had to jump in to burst the target, right? So he missed the stun, toss, combo because of the swap. So the slaughter managed to walk out because of the miscommunication, misplay. So as he blinked in, uh, range illusion swept the slaughter inside the tower, and the Tiny blinked into enemy. Now he got out of position. So even though the slaughter died, now Tiny is in danger, right? So here, this is the problem for this Weaver. It's very hard for the Weaver to run into this uh, Void Spirit because he has the Silence, Agonist. So now the, he has to use the BKB. Even though he uses the BKB, like this right click damage is like really being a problem for this Weaver from Medusa. And, and you see like where they are positioning, they are not even hitting the tower. They are not even like right there. Every time you kill, that's enough. Your skills are on cooldown. Chill, go back a bit and right stand right there because he doesn't have these spells anymore it's on the charge uh, so re you restores these spells as you are taking the tower the tower went down you know this is more than enough for us we took the tier one tower we took the f tower tier two tower we want to fight there we want the second fight this is more than enough so like this is time for you to get back because like this prophet ulti is up and and we are not strong enough to take a team fight our ultimates are on cooldown we need to go back and complete our items and all so like they choose to get back this is called like understanding the situation even though you are winning the fight you don't really like run at the towers run at the enemy all the time you have to know your limits right so like as you know your limits you will know what you can do and what you cannot do so like they are really good at team fight because they understand their limits as well okay so here 25 minutes about to be like 25 we know the boundary don't timing and you just finish the fight the mirana moonlight is on cooldown and like you don't really want to run at the enemy now you are here and but you look at the map you have like you left two walls right there at the bottom lane nobody is playing the bottom lane we were also not for saying top lane nobody is playing mid lane nobody is playing even though the voice spread is there nobody is jumping on the voice spread so they know like something is fussy and immediately the elder titan plays an observer right there and he has this dust 
and enemy comes into the high ground and you see like how they play this and the enemy also plays the observer and sentry right there so they can see what's going on the high ground but everything they see is that Medusa only they don't get to jump on this back line even though they knew that they are here somewhere behind this Medusa but they don't get to see so like this is the best ability from Neon they know how to set up the way they know how to set up the shield so this Medusa is the one who's going to create the shield for the team because these are just supporters if you think hey they are just supporters they are not going to deal a ton of, ton of amount of damage but they are like very important to win a game of Dota and especially in the team fight you just should not be outnumbered at the first play so like they put the voice read once again so the enemy feels good why right? voice read is the one who's there to clean this back line so every time this dead the prophet run at the enemy the omni is safe these back lines are safe why he doesn't leave the omni behind as he runs in he knows the voice read is not there he's not right there so they feel good to take fight but look how he Possession himself, he knows like the rune is about to spawn, and he doesn't want to want the enemy to like get into the high ground because if the enemy walks there, you should be able to break the smoke. So then only you will know the moment he comes to the high ground, hey, they are coming that way, they are coming this way. So he possesses himself to perfectly break the smoke, but like there are wars, so they saw this Medusa, so they ju they jump on the Medusa at the first place, as he doesn't have these ages anymore, so they touch this medusa into five of them so they the, the shield breaks so they don't have their front line anymore right and they don't have any saving hero but the, the, the playing aggressive is the best defensive right so we will see like how this goes elder titan is using the stun making sure they don't get to hit the medusa freely and he used the mentor and then use the stone gaze and because of that they don't get to fight but like they are prepared for that as well why did they swap the medusa into five of them because they want to bait the stone case and they have this omni guardian angel which will like serve them from the magic physical damage so like as he use the stone gaze they're completely fine so elder titan used to stun them and he is not using the ulti yet why like they all need to chase this medusa they have to they should not retreat they have to continue the fight they save this medusa and the medusa is completely trained right so like this ulti is unnecessary so they, they don't use it and you can see the slider never jumped in like this is called patient and understanding also being prepared for like things that would never you imagine before it happens but like they were prepared for this they did their homeworks really well you want the medusa okay you go on the medusa look how the slaughter play he went in and used the m on this v uh on this death prophet but he doesn't use the blink to go in right if you use the blink to go in the moment you blink in you're out of position you don't have the counter in this season anymore right so this medusa can take care of yourself you don't need to do anything crazy you just all you do is just wait for the right time so like the guardian angel just went away like that just for their own safety against this medusa now the medusa is like retreating as he doesn't have any mana and the slider didn't get out of position if the slider blinked in that would have been super bad for the radiant why as he blinks in the team fight begins and the medusa doesn't get to run away and if the medusa choose to run run away and the slaughter will end up dying so the once the slaughter dies they don't have the medusa ulti so no more slider they will be able to take the tower why if the slaughter dies he wouldn't have he will have buyback but he will be de de dead for 50 seconds 46 seconds so like they will be able to press these towers all right so because of that they run back they don't want to fight And they immediately leave the top lane because this is not in their favor anymore. They are happy with what they have achieved. They have forced this guardian angel, which is 160 second cooldown, and the death prophet ulti, which is 101 second cooldown. They are really happy about that because they haven't used anything huge. It's just the Medusa ulti. Right, this Medusa is like really fat, but he doesn't have the buyback, I believe. Yeah, 1700 gold. And he has this butterfly. So you choose to fight, you just farm or you just go and hit this Rosan. So because like the Radiant is like very strong 
and everyone looks like they want to stick together by like they can do the Rosan now so like as they want to do this Rosan look how they react they see this death prophet running towards this Rosan pit and and voice pit like showing the top lane bottom lane is fixed mid lane is fixed and they uh, don't feel comfortable as they saw the death prophet like was like here see they really have a good understanding about what's going on and they even saw that Death Prophet has a gem, right? He came underneath the vision. So if someone clicked this mid, uh, Death Prophet, they would know he has a gem. So like now they take the high ground, even though Rosan is like almost down to half HP, they don't really go. They just c came back to the triangle, like underneath the world, because they want uh, enemy to come to the high ground, so they will have a better advantage at the night time. And as they are very closer to this boundary room timing as well. So now it becomes a fight, not a Rosan attempt. So like now they use the Rosan to bait the enemy to come here because they want to fight. They are stronger and as they are here, so you don't get a free Rosan. So now you have to make a choice whether you fight or run away. But like they choose to fight. They made sure the enemies are not un inside the Rosan pit and they, they have sentries, prepared sentries like beforehand. So like they run to their walls as they small and use the moonlight, they run underneath their vision. So like if the even if the enemy finds you, you are completely fine, right? You have an observer ward and sentry right there. So like the enemy wouldn't be able to play magic, like the invisibility game or like vision advantage game, since we have these amazing wards in the team fights a fighting area. If we if you have ward, you place the ward wherever you take a fight, or if you don't have ward, fight uh, where you have a ward. So that way you will have a better advantage. If you don't have that option as well, fight underneath the tower. Why? So that way also you have this like great ward for yourself. So here they are smoked from the enemy side. I will choose like both the vision. So as they go to the high ground, when she breaks the smokes and when she saw this like enemy is coming, he died like that. The illusion, they had really have to kill this illusion because this illusion is like super strong. It has the abilities so he will be able to use the ability. So here we will slowly see what's happening after kill the, killing the range. We were nowhere closer. He has to TP. So now they kill the range. That is really good for them. They smoke to find a pick off. They are really happy about that because the range is post three. So now as they move in, you can see like in a team fight, you don't use all their main skills straight away all right they still want to fight because they has an outpost if the range choose to buy back he will be able to tp right there so like they're not like super bad they're not in a very bad position all they need is this weaver has to come so what's happening is like they kill the range okay look how they position he used the silence and using the third skill on the slider and the voice spread slowing them and Look how he maintains his position with the help of this grace and the heal as the Omni sits behind this DP to make sure the DP doesn't fall down. And if you can see that he wasn't using the ulti earlier. Alright, he sees the enemies are coming. He doesn't use the ulti and run at the enemy. Alright, and look at the tiny how he positions. They are baiting the enemy to come to the high ground. So the moment they come to the high ground, they will have a dagger range. Like they will have one dagger range to jump on the enemy so they will be able to catch them very easily without going to the lower ground so like they will not get out of position and but what is happening is here this death prophet is trying to bait the enemy to use her skills here fight god begin you see the voice speed like jumped in the moment like voice speed was like waiting for the enemy to begin the fight and he was looking at the supporters like waiting for the opportunity to jump in they really want to get out of position he sees that the grace is used on this death prophet and he sees everything his dagger is on cooldown but like this death prophet will be able to jump in he's like he got silent he's waiting for the right time and now he sees his tiny doesn't have the stun anymore and the omni has used this repel in the uh, gra uh, grace i mean like grace and the purification so he's like literally useless only the ulti so he maintained his distance away from the death prophet just for his own safety because he should not die he should he should live end of the day to use the guardian angel successfully so now the voice which sees the opportunity to jump on this backliner as the death prophet is 
right in front of the Medusa. So he doesn't care about the death traffic, he cares about the backliners. So he runs on, jumps on this tiny, who doesn't get to blink away. Now you see like how he controls there, and he's the Viva is coming. Now the death traffic has choose to go on this voice speed. As a result of that, he just ran away, right? So like now, this is really good. And why is, didn't he use the ulti? He wants to hold it. He wants to use it in his favor. So like he's trying to force the Medusa to use the ulti, which never happened. But like what happened was the moment, the moment you use the ulti, it's not happening. Right? So like the fight began, the voice speed blinked in, so the, he, the moment he saw the voice speed is committing fully, it's a team fight, it's an important fight. So in, in the important fight, you have to use ulti, then he clicks the ulti, knowing that like the voice speed is like, has committed, so they, uh, they really want to fight, so the enemy don't, the enemy will not kite his ulti, so he's happy about using ult, and now the Medusa uses ult, why? He knows. Death Prophet has used ulti. So this is a good stone gaze play. You are going to stop the Death Prophet from hitting you, damaging you. So she will run away, right? Because of that, she runs away trying to catch this voice speed. But voice speed has a different plan to kite the enemy as well. Once again, they kite the Death Prophet ulti very nicely. But it's also, they force the Omni to use the ulti for this Death Prophet safety. As you can see, how much dam damage he has taken as he just amped this death prophet he amped him and you see one he's like eating a lot of damage right he's like eating a lot of damage because of that he used the heal and then grace just for the safety to serve people and now the medusa is happy to chasing people right like they don't have the de uh, omni ulti anymore the throttle ulti is used, now they are kiting once again. They don't jump in. The Slade never jumped into this enemy. This Mirana never leaped into the enemy to use the Starfall. Always maintaining themselves away from the enemy. Now, finally, the Venge has board back and tipping to the outpost. So, we'll see what happened after that. So, like, now they are on the retreat. They are happy about, like, the Omni ulti is down, the Death ulti is down, so they will be able to run back a little bit to have a map advantage, landscape advantage in their favor once again, right? You don't chase them. If you as you chase them, the Death Prophet will be able to delete your backline. So like he runs back to regroup as five. Very good play from Medusa. Because of that, now the range is forced to swap the Medusa into the team five because Medusa doesn't have the ult. And really good swap. So now because of the swap, also, the Tiny also tried to stun toss the Medusa, but now this Tiny got out of position because he blinked in to catch the Medusa, also he swept the target. So like once again, both of them are ending up doing the same thing, even though they managed to swap the Medusa, but what happened was, since the Tiny got out of position, like you can see, like there are some miscommunication from the misplay from the opponent. And it's very harder for the tiny to stun toss the target. Why? Right? If he use the manta, it will be harder for the tiny to swap. So like even before he blinked in, Venge managed to toss the target. I mean like uh, swap the target. So like now, literally the tiny like feels very bad about it because he's out of position and eating a lot of damage. And we completely miss this guy for a time being. As you can see from the start of the fight, he never used a skill. He's just waiting, waiting, and for the right movement, never used the ulti. Only the stuns to make sure the Death Prophet doesn't get to play the fight properly. And look where he is, look where the Medusa is. He's always away from the opponent. There's no way the opponent could jump on this guy, and the enemy doesn't have a catch as well. Viva is the only person who can get to him very easily, and he has the glimmer as well. Alright? So like his positioning is very nice as a post fight supporter and it's always like maintaining the distance. It's not always like sitting behind the core, always maintaining maintaining the same amount of distance between the core and himself. So he will be able to support when the right time comes. So now he's get got swapped and you see the tiny and Vinch, also the other two heroes are in the same line, right? They are on the same line. This is the time for you to use the ulti, like wonderful ulti, which will deal a lot of damage. And the tiny was forced to run away because of that. Venge is the full damage, Omni and Death Prophet is the full damage, and they're completely gone here. 
So like the base one is over range died. Page two, death prophet like ran 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 back a little bit to make sure the enemy comes to the high ground. As the enemy came to the high ground, now it's death prophet turn to bait the enemy because if the enemy takes the completely focus the team fire, then it's worth. To, for the range to buy back and TP to the outpost, right? So because of that, he runs back into the enemy, and as the result of that, he also has this illusion, which is really nice. He still has this trap. So now the fight begins because of Jab's uh, voice spreads accent, and he buys back, and the Weaver also TP top, and now he buybacks as he sees like the enemies are committing fully. But this is a phase two, but like phase three. Like a really good idea from Neon, this NK. Okay, we force the buyback, we force the Death Prophet ult, we force the Omni Guardian Angel, run back a little bit, guys. Force them, kite them as much as you could. But this Medusa is charging in as he has this stone gaze for the time being. So he's pushed the enemy into the enemy side and he's just ran away into this team. And finally, he gets trapped and this is the end game. So this is the end game. You don't need to serve these skills anymore. Throw everything you have. Win the fight. So if the both the sides are doing the same thing. And honestly, like Omni is kind of out of position. Here, as you can see, he doesn't have mana. Uh, so like he literally like ran into this Medusa and ate full damage. And as the result of that, he died like that. Which wasn't like really nice. Like, I mean, like, he could, like, maintain a position, but he also, like, out of mana and all. So, this team fight was, like, like very nicely set up by the Slaughter and the Medusa. And the others are not being pressured. They just chill as his teammates are, as their teammates are playing some good Dota. And waited for the right time for this Mirana. Always waited for the right time to get into the enemy. He always stayed away. And the Elder Titan always stayed away. They know at the beginning of the team fight, they are super weak, right? They are supporters. So they understand their limitation. They understand what they are here for. They understand the purpose of their heroes and the role. So they do their job really nice, which is why from the start to the end, Neon has all five sub for, for all five heroes most likely in every single team fight. So like this is the story behind their success. Alright guys, like the, uh, if you like my work, if you like my ideas and thoughts, please like and share my video. It's like it means a lot. Like help me to reach like more audience. I hope like you all learned something, and now you know like why this like neon is rising in Southeast Asia. They are one of the best team in Southeast Asia right now, like top ten or something, because. How, the way they play the game they're consistently like t fighting like really well like in every single game not only about the laning not only about how they pick hero it's also about like the approach when it comes to the team fight which plays a huge impact in every single game because just because you pick the hero doesn't mean you're going to win the enemy is not going to call gg you have to solve the real pain in the game right like since you won the draft or like even though you lost the draft you saw them we are still in the game but like whatever the draft they get to play they play very nicely like enemy don't really get a chance to take a team fight in, in their favor again in this new bye bye guys see you in another video don't forget to share and like my videos bye bye